Let's implement caching using Mediator. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Jono, and as always, if you guys want to jump straight into the code, timestamp here, and as always, all the code for this video will be in my GitHub repository, link in the description below. Let's get into it. So what are we actually going to be doing? Well, I'm going to be showing you how we can use Mediator to actually build a caching behavior so we can cache our queries. And it's really simple too. We're only adding like one interface and then our behavior, and that's pretty much it. It's really, really nice. And this video is actually a part of my CQRS and .NET 5 series. If you guys haven't seen the other videos, be sure to check it out. I go through a logging behavior, a validation behavior, and now the caching behavior. So be sure to check those out. Link in the description below. And if you guys like these videos, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Let's jump into Visual Studio. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is create a new folder called caching. And inside this folder, we're going to create an interface called iCacheable. And this interface is going to have one property. It's going to return a string and it's going to call, it's going to be called the cache key. And it's going to be a getter. Right here. So that's it. So now let's go to our query, our get to do by ID query. And all that we need to change is this query needs to implement the iCacheable interface. And if we implement that, we have our cache key. And in this example, our cache key is going to be get to do by ID. Uh, let's do ID. So the reason why I added this uh, prefix here is because these cache keys need to be unique. We could have multiple queries down the line where they just take in an ID. So I wanna be able to, uh, to differentiate them. That's pretty much it. Now we just need to implement our behavior. So let's go to our behaviors uh, folder and add a new class called caching behavior. And this is our caching behavior. So I'm not gonna be writing all the code just because it's gonna to take too long to write and it's easier to just explain. So as always, we're going to be implementing the iPipeline behavior with T request, T response. And a key thing is our request actually has a constraint on it and it's going to implement the iCacheable interface. Another important aspect is our memory cache. So we're injecting our iMemory cache into this behavior. So we're gonna be checking our cache whether it actually, or whether the request already exists. If not, we're gonna be adding it. So this is our logic here. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is but first we're gonna be checking to see if the item is already inside the cache. So it's, what's, what it's going to do, it's going to check the cache for the current cache key. And if the cache key already exists, then we know that the, re the request is cached and we can just return the cached response, saying cached a lot. <laughs> um, and the next thing is if it doesn't exist, if we haven't actually run the request yet or it's not inside the cache, then all we have to do is do our regular get our response, go to the next step in the pipeline or execute the request. And then all we have to do is add our response to our cache. So pretty simple. Essentially, we've got... Uh, two different steps here is we either return the cache response or we run the request and then add the response to the cache. Pretty simple, nothing fancy, and it works. Now, all we have to do is add our caching behavior to our startup class. So if we go to our startup, so I want our caching behavior to run after our validation. So let's just copy that. And I'm just going to do caching behavior. So one other important thing that we actually have to add is our in-memory cache. So we can just do services dot add, uh, no, I think it's just add memory cache. I believe it is memory cache. There we are. So essentially what that's going to do is it's going to register an uh, I memory cache to the service collection. And we need that because our caching behavior depends on an I memory cache. So if we run this now, we should start seeing uh, log messages to say uh, returning cached response or executing request and adding adding response to cache. So if we do get to do by ID, just do one, and we look at our response, we can see that get to do by ID one is not inside the cache, executing the request. Good, it's done it. And if we hit execute again, and as you can see, we're now getting log messages saying re returning cache value for CQRS test queries get to do by ID query. And there we go. In just a couple of minutes, we've added caching to our API using Mediator. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe. And as always, all the code for this video will be in my GitHub repository. Link in the description below. Have a good one, guys. Catch ya.